The road to a well-rounded game. You ever think about that? Just if, if you were to construct, how does a player become good, great, well-rounded, capable, capable of playing well, but playing well over the course of time, capable of fixing their mistakes, capable of uh, competing for your local club championship, capable of playing in tournaments at a high level, how does that happen? I think... Everyone has different journeys, but amongst the good players I've seen, been a part of their journey, I see similarities from the best that I think you should understand and um, have a framework for, for your time, your practice, your efforts, and so you can kind of understand how to get into that from wherever you're at to being, to being better, to being on the course to being better, and to ultimately end up being well-rounded. Because to me... That's like the most powerful, fun kind of golf is when you can go out and you can hit different shots. You can um, you can hit different shots. You can work the ball right. You can work the ball left. You don't get bogged down by a task that's unmanageable. And um, you can get there. So let's talk about it. A framework for getting you to, to playing better golf. I like that. My name is Tim Connor. I'm the host of this podcast. Uh, wherever you're listening, I would it would mean a lot to me if you'd share it with a friend or you'd leave this thing a review or subscribe wherever you're at. Uh, yeah, that stuff means a lot. I want to get this thing to 10,000 listens a month. And we're about three quarters of the way there. So let's get over that edge. Share with the slicer in your group. Okay. Because I'm going to give my best every week to you guys. That's something I, I've been re- actually really proud of is every week I show up, I try to deliver with good information that can help you out. So if you feel that, let's uh, let's get it to where we need it to be. Um, your framework for playing better golf. Okay, so st- and I've recycled this first part, but I'll say it again. Firstly, you want to have good body mechanics. That means you turn and move like a golfer. You have a weight shift that works towards the target. Your arms and your limbs are relatively stable through the hitting area. That stuff is important. Okay, so that's uh, step one. We want to have good movement. Step two. We want to maintain or create ball first contact. You want to be able to hit the ball and then hit the ground in front of the ball when the ball is on the ground. That's most of golf. You also want to be able to hit near the middle of the club face. So it's depending on where you're coming from, you don't have to be perfect, but hitting it near the middle of the club face will enable you to have a consistent, repeatable ball flight. After that, we want to really start to develop our side to side, our club face. Uh, management, our club face dispersion, really shrink up our dispersion angles. And at this point, we've created a ball flight we can trust. Uh, congratulations, you're ahead of most of the golf learning curve. Now, it's from this point I really want to dig in to, to talk about the next step of evolution to being a good, capable golfer and understanding your golf swing. I think many people have this fascination that they're just going to go play golf and they're going to hit it relatively straight. And that's going to be where they settle and that's fine hitting a ball relatively high relatively straight is a good thing but every capable player i've met can work the ball both right and left okay this is important here because you don't just want to settle for hitting straight shots be creative with your practice this is like this is so important that you can work it right work it left work it high work it low And self-discovery, your own learning during that process is really, really important. A golf coach can help accentuate your learning curve. They can help you dive in with your technique. But there will be no more powerful lessons you learn in your lifetime than you learn through self-discovery. So be creative. Understand it's okay to play with the variables. Play with your ball position. Play with the club face. Play with different things that will enable you to not be one-dimensional with your golf swing. This will create the most well-rounded kind of improvement in golf game that will be able to stand up and stand the course of the test of time. Often I'll see a good player just, they'll get come off the tracks and they won't be able to get it back on. It's because they haven't experienced the diversity or the creativity with their practice that they've needed to to really understand how to use their club as a tool. Ultimately, your club is a tool to do a job. And that tool can be used in more than one function. That's why you hear things and stories like Tiger Woods hitting the the nine different shot drill where he'll hit it high, medium, and low. High, medium, low, straight, straight, straight. 
high, medium, and low, slice, 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 high, medium, and low, hook, 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 because he's capable, he's creative, he's learned through the course of time how to use his club to do different stuff that makes him well-rounded. And um, that's really, really powerful. This goes for trajectory as well. Learn to hit the ball low. Learn to hit the ball high. Use your resources for guidance, but don't use them as a crutch. For example, just because you're working with a golf coach doesn't mean that you can't learn stuff on your own. Ask that coach questions to be your resource, your friend, your mentor. Um, a golf coach can be there to help inspire you, but really you need to be driving the improvement process ultimately if you want to play the game at a high level because that's going to come down to your internal want to play the game at a high level, your internal discipline to go out and practice on your own. All of the things that are going to show up on the 18th hole when you got to hit the shot that matters is what you've done, not what anyone else has done leading up to that point, but you. You've put in the reps. You understand what you need to do. You've, you have the experience to draw from and the technique work that you understand the shot you want to hit and the shot you want to hit is the one that's going to show up. Okay. So a couple key takeaways there. We want to be creative with our practice. We want to learn to hit the ball both to the right, to the left, high, and low. All of those things are very, very important. Now, there's this extremist type attitude where a person's like, well, I can slice it, I can hook it, I can hit the shots, I'm good. And you're not good. You still need to work on your technique. You still need to have a solid foundation for your technique. You still need to use um, examples of technique that have proven to be successful in the past. For, and what I mean by that is just because you're hitting the ball okay or you can work the ball right and left doesn't mean you can stop pursuing your technique. Your technique should be a lifelong endeavor because even once you've built good technique, we still want to maintain that and things will change day to day, week to week. And you need to understand, hey, this is where I want to be. And if it shifts, how can you get back to that point of being in the place you've wanted to be? the place you've worked hard to be at. Golf is a game that's fluid and dynamic, and um, nothing more has proven to me true than that over the course of time. Things will cha change day to day and week to week, and really understanding how you can work back, kind of reverse engineer your way back to where you want to be is really important. For example, if you go out that day and you're slicing the golf ball, well, then you go to the range and you practice hooking it. But if you don't know how to, ho how to hook it, well, that stinks, right? Because then you're lost and your time and your, your effort practicing is, um, well, then you ha you're basically learning a whole new skill, right? So we want to be well-rounded so we can kind of reverse engineer our way back to where we want to be. I want to leave you with a couple best practices here because I talked about different styles of practice, creativity, being well-rounded. But really, if you're trying to push your game to the next level, here, here's the recipe that I would operate from. How are you driving the ball? Are you driving it far enough to shoot the kind of scores you want to shoot? Are you driving it accurate enough to shoot the kind of scores you want to shoot? Are you hitting enough greens? Greens and regulation are everything when it comes to scoring. They're paramount. So keep track of your how you drive it, your greens, and then your putts. If you're keeping track of those three things, you can kind of fill in the blanks with the rest of what's happening with your golf game. If you're driving it poorly or you're not making enough, put enough putts, all of those things will tell a story about where you're at versus where you want to be. So kind of being able to have that framework for your improvement is really, really important. And then just having a practice structure that's going to benefit you over the course of time. Um, utilize different clubs in your bag for practice. And the 80-20 of golf, in my opinion, is if you want to get the greatest return on your time practicing, spend a lot of time practicing with your wedges and your scoring irons. Because everything you do with those wedging and those scoring irons travels up. Meaning that those good habits will travel up. But everything you do with a driver doesn't necessarily travel down to a wedge. The shell of your swing is similar, but it's different hitting dynamics, so on and so forth. So... If you're really trying to make the most of your time and score the golf ball well, hit a lot of wedges. Um, 
there's more to it than that, right? We want to have a wholehearted practice plan, but hitting a lot of wedges is a great way to fine tune your touch, your technique, your ability to hit greens when it matters, your ability to hit it close and get it in birdie opportunity. Like that's a very potent and powerful way to practice, but having a well-rounded practice routine is important. So hitting your wedges, practicing different yardages, including some of the longer clubs at the end of your practice session, swinging for speed. A lot of players don't practice pushing their top end speed. It's become more prevalent recently with some of the stuff we've seen from people who do like long drive and things like that. But practice your final five or 10 shots and just rip at the ball. Like practicing your upper end speed will create more capacity and teach you about the things you need to do and feel to be able to generate more speed in the golf swing. All of these things we talked about today are best practices to help you develop and grow with the game of golf. At the end of the day, the journey is still yours and and this is a framework. So use that framework to direct your time and efforts. It's not necessarily a black and white framework, but these are best practices that will and should allow you to develop over the course of your career. Don't be stagnant, don't plateau, Work every day a little bit in the name of better golf. Uh, I'm going to sign off today. Share this thing with a friend. Leave it a review. And uh, I will catch you back here same time, same place next week. 